Welcome back to Luna Basics. In this video, you'll learn how to create Luna sessions and navigate the application. When you open Luna, the first thing you'll see is the Luna sidebar, which is home to the Create panel, the Discover panel, the Manage panel, and the Settings panel. The Create panel is open by default and is used to create new sessions or open existing ones. On the Discover panel, you can browse Luna extensions, instruments, and UAD plugins that are available to demo or purchase, as well as any special offers that are available to you. Plugins, extensions, and instruments can be purchased directly from the Discover panel. This panel also features links to helpful tips and tricks articles that are a great way to learn about Luna, UAD plugins, Apollo interfaces, and more. The Manage panel is where you can download and demo additional Luna extensions and instruments, as well as install updates for extensions and instruments that are already installed. You can also use this panel to manage the location of sample libraries for instruments like Shape and Revel. For example, if you wanted to move the libraries to an external SSD drive. The Settings panel can be used to access your Apollo settings and I.O., as well as manage various Luna options. For example, here you can adjust Luna's metering to be pre-fader or post-fader, or change how knobs in Luna respond to adjustments. Now that you're familiar with each panel in the Luna sidebar, let's go back to the Create panel and open a session. There are two tabs on the Create panel. On the Recent tab, you can open sessions from a list of recently opened sessions, or click the From Disk button to open a session from any location on your system. Luna Sessions can also be opened in the Mac OS Finder by double-clicking the session file. On the New tab, you can create a new Luna session or create a session from an AEF file. When creating a new session, you can choose the tempo, time signature, and file location using the options on this tab. Once you've configured these settings and given your session a name, click the Create button at the bottom. After clicking the Create button, the session window opens. This is Luna's main workspace consisting of two different views. The Timeline view, which is shown by default, and the Mixer view, which we'll get into later. The UA Diamond icon in the top left is used to show and hide the Luna sidebar so you can return to the Create, Discover, Manage, or Settings panels at any time. Before we dive into how to navigate each view, let's go over the four main elements of the session window. The Focus Browser on the left, the Control Bar at the top, the Monitor section on the right, and the Clocking Settings and System Meters at the bottom. The Focus Browser is a key part of Luna's intuitive workflow. The Focus Browser eliminates digging through menus and submenus by giving you access to settings related to what you're currently doing, such as creating tracks, setting inputs, or loading plugins. For example, after creating a new session, the Create New Tracks dialog is shown automatically so I can quickly create the tracks I'll need to get started. I can then click on the Input field and use the browser to assign an input, and if I click on an Insert slot, I can use the browser to search and load plugins. You'll learn all of the functions of the Focus Browser as we go, but for now let's move on and check out the Control Bar. The control bar lives at the top of the session window and contains a number of important controls. At first glance, you'll notice the large tape machine style transport buttons. From left to right, these buttons are return to zero, go to end, stop, play, record, and the last button toggles loop playback and recording on or off. To the left of the transport controls, you'll find view buttons that let you quickly switch between the session window views and show or hide different elements of each view. A BPM display, global metronome controls, and the main counter display which can be switched between bars and beats, minutes and seconds, or samples. To the right of the transport controls you'll find a selection display that corresponds to the current playhead position or selection in the timeline, and a bank of global settings buttons that let you toggle track modes like solo, mute, record enable, input monitor, and accelerated real-time monitoring. These are important settings so we'll take a closer look at them later. To the right of the global settings are monitor controls and four buttons that open Luna's workflows. The workflows help tidy up Luna's workspace by allowing you to show and hide different settings and features based on what you're currently doing, such as recording, editing, or mixing. We'll take a more in-depth look at these workflow actions in the recording, editing, and mixing videos later in this series. The right side of the session window is populated by the monitor section. This section will look familiar if you've ever used Apollo's console application. The large meter display shows the monitor output level, and the control room button below gives you access to monitor settings such as source, dim controls, and talkback levels. The Cue Outputs button opens a window where you can manage each active cue and select the source for each headphone output in your Apollo system. For example, I can route the main monitor mix to the headphone outputs on my Apollo X8 by making sure one of the cue sources is set to mix, and then assigning both of my headphone outputs to that cue. On the other hand, if I wanted to route a custom cue mix to my headphones, I would deselect the mix button and route signal to each cue via each track's cue sends. The controls at the bottom of the monitor section let you toggle mono or mute for the monitor outputs and adjust the monitor volume. 
Finally, the bottom bar in the session window shows meters for CPU, memory, and UAD DSP resources, and gives you quick access to clocking settings such as sample rate and clock source. Note that audio recorded at different sample rates can be mixed and matched in Luna. The sample rate setting determines the rate that new audio will be recorded at, and the rate at which existing audio is processed and played back. That covers the main elements of the session window. Now let's get into the timeline and mixer views. The timeline view is the default shown when you open a new Luna session, so let's start there. I'm going to go back to the Create panel and open a different session that has a few more tracks to better show Luna's other features. The Timeline view shows all tracks in the session along with their associated audio and MIDI clips. Tracks are organized vertically and can be rearranged by clicking and dragging, either in the main workspace or in the tracks list on the left. Each track has its own controls, such as Record Enable, Input Monitor, Solo, and Mute, along with settings such as Volume, Pan, and Routing. Once audio or MIDI has been recorded or imported into the session, the edit workspace to the right of the track controls is used to edit and arrange the clips in a number of ways, which we'll cover in the recording and editing videos later in this series. The focus channel to the left of the track display gives you access to all settings for the currently selected track. Click on the name of any track to bring it into focus, and all of its corresponding channel settings will be shown here. The focus channel allows you to quickly access input settings, inserts, routing, and more without having to switch to mixer view. Just hover your mouse over the focus channel and scroll to navigate the channel strip. You can also collapse sections of the channel strip by clicking on the section header. We'll take a closer look at the channel strip in the recording and mixing videos. It's important to note that if multiple tracks are selected, changes made in the focus channel are applied to all of the selected tracks. A collection of rulers at the top of the workspace provide a variety of timeline functions. The ruler section can be configured by clicking the three dots to the left and selecting which rulers you'd like to see. The bars and beats ruler will always remain in view, However, the other rulers can be hidden by deselecting the box next to the name of each ruler. This Timeline Settings panel can also be used to hide different clip elements, as well as the grid lines in the Edit workspace. There are a few different ways to navigate the timeline. To scroll up and down, drag the scroll bar on the right or scroll vertically with your mouse or trackpad. To scroll side to side, drag the scroll bar on the bottom or scroll horizontally with your mouse or trackpad. If you're using a mouse that only supports vertical scrolling, hold the Shift key while scrolling to scroll side to side. To quickly zoom in and out from the current playback position, you can hold down the Option key and scroll, hold down Command and use the bracket keys, or use the R and T keys for a one-handed workflow. Tracks can be resized individually or all at once in a number of different ways. To resize all tracks in the session at once, open the Track Heights menu at the top left of the track display and select one of the options. You can also cycle through these options by holding down the Control and Option keys and using the up or down arrows on the keyboard or make finer adjustments by holding down the same keys and scrolling with the mouse. To only adjust the height of currently selected tracks, hold down the control key and use the up and down arrows, or scroll with the mouse. You can also click and drag the bottom of a track to resize it, or select a track and press the E key to automatically expand it to fill the workspace. Once a track is expanded in this way, press the E key again to return it to its previous height. This command also works for multiple tracks, and for clips or selections in the timeline. Overall, the E key is one of the most useful commands in Luna for quick editing. Now let's take a look at the second view in Luna, the Mixer view. You can switch between the views in two different ways, either by clicking the icons in the view section of the control bar, or by using the keyboard shortcut Command Equals. The Mixer view shows all tracks in the session in a console style display. At the top of the workspace is a meter bridge that shows level activity for each track at a glance, and can be used to jump to a track by clicking on its meter, or to scroll through the tracks by dragging. You can also scroll through the tracks by scrolling horizontally with your mouse or trackpad, or by holding the shift key while scrolling vertically. Below the meter bridge is the main mix workspace, which is divided into two parts. The upper area of the workspace displays all channel settings for each track, including input settings, inserts, multi-track tape, and track routing like sends, cues, and output. This area can be navigated by clicking and dragging the scroll bar to the right, scrolling with the mouse or trackpad, or by using the mixer navigation panel to the left. Simply click on the section that you want to see in the navigation panel to bring that section into view. The mixer rows that are currently visible are illuminated in the panel, and the dots next to the section names can be used to hide each section. The buttons at the bottom of the panel let you quickly expand or collapse all sections at once, switch between large and small insert views, and enable fixed inserts, which shows the full number of inserts for each section regardless of how many are currently being used. Below the navigation panel are a number of modifiers which can be used to quickly apply changes across multiple tracks in a few different ways. We'll cover the specific uses of these modifiers in the basic mixing video. 
At the lower area of the mix workspace is the fader section, where you can adjust the level and pan for each track, change the automation mode, and access controls such as record enable, input monitor, solo, and mute. By default, the fader section is shown at its full height. However, if you want to reduce their size to bring more of the channel settings into view, you can click and drag at the top of the fader section. To change the name of any track, simply double click on the track label below the track's fader. You can also change the track color by clicking the color strip directly below the track label and selecting a color using the focus browser on the left. This method also works in timeline view or from the tracks list. Now that we've gone over the different elements and views of Luna and how to navigate them, you're almost ready to start making music. Check out the next video in this series where we'll go over how to record audio into Luna.